still in work. There are still some questions maybe uh, open you'd like to ask to TJ van Garden. We have 20 minutes after it's really rest day, so we do a couple of minutes Q&A and then afterwards we ask the TV guys to come to the table and to ask some questions as well. Okay, so please feel free. TJ, um, very impressive opening week. I'm sure you'll be delighted with your, the work that you've done. You, you've, in some ways, it looks like you've been measuring yourself very closely to Chris Froome and have ridden very similar races. I, is he, has he been your kind of benchmark about how to approach this race? No, no, we haven't been uh, focusing on any individual. We've just been, we've come in with a plan to, uh, you know, ride the front, um, earn the respect, and uh, stay out of trouble. And I think they've come with a similar plan. But no, that's not to say that we've been basing our race off of Sky or Chris Frank. We've, we've done our best to, to ride our own race. DJ, uh, Jim Wapu told me yesterday that Dutch needs to practice. So I would like losses in Dutch, but I'll be delighted with our journalists. Uh, how is it for a former sportman from the yard from Alpha Berlin to be called the biggest competitor by Chris Proof? Do you want me to answer in Dutch? Or? Yeah, well, yeah. I think it's better to do it here in English, but that's... Uh, oh. I, I'd like to come to you in Dutch, yes. Okay. Um, yeah, it is gewoon heel mooi that... Uh, that uh, ik heb so many followers from the Netherlands uh, now still. Um, yeah, it is a long time ago that I had the half of the rain, but I had a lot of... I had a lot of... I had a lot of good memory. Of the time that I there was there. And uh, yeah, I, yeah, that's it. Are you in English now? Yeah, may I ask you just to translate yeah. by yourself, maybe? Um, yeah, so it's yeah, it's it's a uh, it's great that I still have so many fans in in Holland, and um, it's uh, it was a few years. It's already it's a long time ago that I've lived in Alphen on the Rhine, but uh, it's it was great to be back there, and that's really an honor that so many people there still follow me. And so, and if you don't mind, now we continue in English. Let's yeah, sure. Uh, but just a serious question. How is it like to be called the biggest competitor by Chris Froome? We said it yesterday. Oh, oh yeah. Um, yeah, it's, 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 it's special. It's an honor. It, you know, he's such a big rider. He's won the Tour de France. Um, so, I mean, to have him have his eye on me, that's, uh, you know, that's a huge honor. Um, Next question, please. Uh, TJ, um, how is the situation for cycling in America after the Lance Armstrong uh, affair? Um, and, and do you feel uh, in the same way as the German rise of this generation has to um, end with, with the former generation, prove that it can be done in a normal way, cycling? Yeah, I mean, obviously, cycling, it's kind of had a bad reputation over the past couple of years it was in a really good place and, and now uh, I think you can see that some sponsors are leaving and um, but when I look at it um, from a different point of view there's still lots of young American riders that are just entering into the into the world tour and uh, you know they're, they're getting very impressive results and um, so I think American cycling is in a very strong place and yeah, obviously we don't want to have a, a return to what we we saw in the past couple of years, and we're I think everyone is is fighting to do it in a correct way, and uh, you know hopefully hopefully it stays that way, and the fans can appreciate it, and the sponsors can appreciate it, and uh, and yeah, we just want to want to turn the page. Please in play. Not to touch you. Can you tell me? for us something about how you look at the upcoming days and especially the day of tomorrow uh, after the rest day the first uh, top hill finish with a 50k climb uh, how how you got, what you gonna do up there and well, what will this rest day do for you in this case? Yeah um yeah some comments I have a bail 
heel moeite met de uh, rustdag. You, you, you can answer me. Oké. Ja, oké. Some people have uh, difficulties with uh, rest days. Um, but yeah, and especially with the first mountain stage coming up, you never really know how your body is going to respond. So it's important to get out and ride and kind of follow the same routine as if it was a normal day's racing. Um, only you just ride a little bit less and try to rest up. But uh, but yeah, I mean, in the, in the Pyrenees, that's when the race is really gonna gonna start. I mean, right now we've been able to kind of hide in the peloton and um, and use mostly the team's efforts to to be up there. And now it's going to come a time where we can't hide behind our teams. We're going to have to do it on our own. Um, but I feel ready for it. Um, my team feels ready for it. And we're all confident in what we're set out to do. And uh, yeah, I think uh, I think we're going to have a, a good race. And the gap is only 12 seconds. What you going to do with this one? This is not the limit, you know? Yeah, I mean, first, you, you can't get too far ahead of yourself. I mean, first uh, first of all, we have to monitor the breakaway of the day, and then we have to see who's who's going to chase. We have to see what Sky's tactic is. Do they let the break go and possibly win, or do they chase it back because Broom wants to win? You know, there's also time bonuses at the, at the line, which really influences how the race is going to be won. Um, so, I mean, we don't know what Sky's tactic is going to be, but they might want to let the breakaway win. And then maybe a team like Contador says, no, we want to wear it race for the bonus second, so then he's going to have his team chase it back. So like all these scenarios you can't really, uh, you can't really plan for. So I'm just, going to have, I'm just going to have to see how my legs respond once we get on the climb and uh, see how I'm feeling. Obviously, if I see an opportunity, I'm going to take it, but uh, yeah. You have to you have to feel the race when you're in it. TJ, John, please. TJ, I mean, in other sports, you get sort of very clearly defined moments. A Wimbledon final, a Super Bowl final, where the athlete knows, you know, this is this is the moment. All the butterflies and the anticipation that goes with that. Is that the same in cycling with a mountain stage? I mean, when you line up tomorrow and you look at each other with your dark glasses, are you going to have that feeling of like, this is this is it, this is the moment, or is, in a race like this, is it kind of like that every day? Yeah, I mean, there's there's always a lot of anticipation, and you know, you kind of size up your competitors. You maybe you maybe look at their legs if they're looking really really lean, or if they're um, or you know, you try to look at facial expressions or even just body language. Like you try to get um, you you try to read your competitor as much as you can. Um, yeah, I'm I'm sure that everyone reads what all whatever all the other guys say in the press and um, yeah so there's a lot of anticipation but uh, once you get out on the road it uh, things kind of fall into routine and and then it's just basically comes down to who has the legs. Please. Um, other other riders like uh, Nibali or uh, Quintana are far enough back they have to attack um, whereas you're only just behind through. Do you want to sort of take on the role as main challenger and be the one making things happen? Or will you let those guys who are a bit more desperate launch the attacks and sort of see if you can capitalize? Uh, I think my strength is going to be in my consistency and rather than, rather than my ability to fly up the con and leave everyone in my dust. I think uh, if I'm realistic that way, um, Pyrenees. I just. I think I'm. I'm going to need to mark the guys that are important and take an opportunity if it's there. But you really just use that to uh, as an opportunity to let the other guys wear themselves down. And then I think the real race is going to happen in the third week. Because uh, yeah, the tour, like I've said before, it's we're not. It's not a sprint race. It's a marathon. So it's uh, it. It's it's going to be won probably on either La Toussier or Alpe d'Huez. So um, you can't. You have to keep uh, a little bit of your powder dry until then. Please, TJ. Before the race started, people spoke about the four favorites, and you weren't included in that. I think if they were speaking about four favorites, now you certainly would be. And you've been twice fifth. If you were offered second now, guaranteed, would you take it? 
Oh, that's a good question. Um, right now, you put it on the table, I would say no, because uh, I, I value more the process of how it happens and not knowing what's going to happen. So, um, so if I, I, I would rather, I would rather live through the process of getting, of getting fifth place again, knowing I gave 100% rather than signing a piece of paper guaranteed to get second. Right, please. Thank you. Do, do you race uh, on the offensive, or do you, do you try to hold that, that second place and race defensively, much like Chris maybe will try to be racing? Yeah, I mean, I mean, like I said before, the it's it's a marathon. So I mean, you, I, I don't think uh, I don't think my strength is going to be to be able to just fly up the road and drop guys like. Quintana and Contador. Um, I think my strength is going to be in my consistency, and uh, I think those guys are. I have the advantage that those guys are maybe a little nervous, and they're probably going to try to jump, jump, jump. Whereas I can maybe stay a bit more calm, and then if those guys wear themselves out, then in the third week, I think that's when my consistency is going to is going to become a factor. Please. TJ, I wonder if you're at all annoyed that it's taken almost a week for people to start talking about you in this Fab Five. I mean, how do you feel about that? Yeah, you know, I mean, the Backstreet Boys have five guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it, it seemed a little incomplete. No, I'm, I'm joking. Um, no, those guys, they've all won Grand Tours, um, and I have not. So I haven't even been on the podium of one. So, uh, so I mean, it's it's logical that those guys were the the five star favorites, and I think um, you know it, it was nice to fly under the radar a little bit. And uh, I was not at all offended that I wasn't named in there. But um, like I said before, it's uh, it doesn't matter who their names are, what they've done. Everyone's clock starts at zero in Utrecht, and we're gonna race as if. You know, like we're here to win, and uh, and that's what we've done, and that's what we'll continue doing. Well, let's move to down under rope, and then rock, please. Yeah, TJ, um, you're at this point of your career where you, when you said at the start of the tour, you're aiming for the podium, and um, obviously you're the two fifths. I was wondering, with at the point of where you are now, mentally as well as physically, have you drawn more on uh, and more on your own experiences to? motivated to get you ready where you are now? Or has there been anybody whose experiences you've been able to draw on? And if so, who that person may be or people may be and what they pass on? Yeah, I mean, I try to learn anything I can from uh, from anyone available. It's, uh, you know, whether it be someone directly telling me or uh, just observations that I make, but also from my own personal experiences. like. If I've had a bad day, you know, I, I think back to when I had a bad day last year in the tour, you know, first thing I, I thought was, okay, why? And it was the day after a rest day, so I looked at what I did on that rest day, and I'm like, okay, I think I think maybe I rode too hard, I didn't eat enough, and um, we're going to make sure to correct that mistake. And, um, and, you know, guys like former teammates, uh, George Hincapie, Cadell Evans, obviously, um, I mean, we're right now. I feel like we're riding this tour much the same way that Cadell rode in 2011. When you know we have strong guys in the first week on the front, make sure we're ahead of any splits, and we want to get into this first week a step ahead rather than a step behind. And um, it's gone perfectly. And you know, we've we've kind of taken the mold and and applied it to to this Tour de France. And so far, it's working out really well. Rob. Now, TJ, I wonder if you could just talk a little bit about racing with power, because we see um, perhaps a little bit of emotion taken away from the racing when, when Froome is looking down at his, his power meter, you, you to an extent. How much does that play on it? Do you wish that there was racing without power meters, for example? Um, no, I, I mean, I think, I think the data is good to have, and uh, I, I don't think it's really changed the racing all that much. It's, uh, I mean, people are obviously more calculated, but there's so many variables that go into power that you can't just say, this is my threshold, this is what I ride at, you know? Like, 
it's set to maybe be 40 degrees this next week, so then maybe your threshold goes down, your heart rate goes up, and um, and then if you try to look at the number, base your numbers off of that without without doing all these million, you'd have to be a math genius to, to figure that out. And so it's it, you don't really get as much benefit as you, you would think. Um, I don't know, it's, it, it's one of those things like, you know, there was a big argument about radios earlier on. And, you know, we don't have radios in some races, but for the World Tour races, we have them. I look at the difference between those races and their race still the same way. So I feel that the same that could be said about power. Like, people don't like to see us using power, but if you take them away, the racing's not going to change. So two more questions at this point. Shane. Um, Alberto Pogstorm and the gentleman in the valley have obviously not performed uh, as sharply as people might have thought. What do they look like from inside the peloton, and do you believe that they can come back? Uh, or particularly in the case of Alberto Pogstorm, do you think he's fatigued from the general and it's going to be difficult for him to be at 100%? I don't know. I, uh, I mean, it, it could all just be a game of poker he's playing, um, trying to look a little fatigued, and you know, maybe um, having the other guys spend a little bit more bullets while he's just flying under the radar. But then again, I don't think he would he would have liked to have been a minute back at this point. Um, with Vincenzo, I, I definitely think that um, he was kind of counting on this first week to gain time. You know the way he did last year in the cobble stage and in uh, and in Yorkshire. So, so I don't know. I mean, those guys are huge champions. You can never write them off. Although these were two questions, one last for John. I just wanted a little bit the science of the rest day. You talked before about how you overrode an under eight. Um, how has that changed this time? Oh, you just having three square meals and. Uh, and did a little easier riding. <laughs> but yeah, that's about it. I mean, it's it's not it's not rocket science. I think I just uh, I just miscalculated a little bit, and so we're you know speaking with my my coach and the doctors and um, making sure to monitor the weight and monitor the fluid intake and just make sure that everything's topped up without going overboard. Um, and. Yeah, no, I, I feel good and I feel rested and relaxed and I'm confident for tomorrow. Super, thank you very much. So, and the camera crews, if you need one or two quotes, just stay